Autodesk has released the brand new 2021 version of AutoCAD with exciting new features and enhancements. And in this video, I'll highlight some of these key new features. So I'll start with the DWG history feature. Now for that, I'll open one of the drawings which is saved on my OneDrive account. So right now, as you can see, I have this drawing saved on OneDrive sample office plan folder. So I'll just click here to open my drawing file. Now when you have your drawings saved on the cloud account and the supported cloud accounts are Box, OneDrive and Dropbox, then the drawing history will be saved and these drawing history will be saved right inside your current drawing file. So it won't create new copies of your drawing file. It will be saved right inside the current drawing file, which is sample office plan in my case. Now, whenever you open a new file in a cloud account, you will most likely get a pop up bubble right here on the bottom right corner, which will show you a link to open the drawing history. But if for some reason you don't see that you can go to view and select this DWG history. Now this DWG history or the drawing history palette will show you all the previous revisions or the previous versions of this drawing. In this case, I have three versions of this drawing. Now I can click on this icon right next to the drawing to make a comparison between the current and the previous version. So I'm just going to click here and this will open this drawing comparison and obviously we don't have any kind of comparison so this is not going to show anything here so I'll just click on exit compare but now I'll select another revision or another version that's this one so I'll once again click here in the DWG compare option and now you can clearly see the differences so these are some of the revisions they are highlighted using the colors as well as using the revision cloud so in order to see this clearly you can just click on this gear icon in the drawing compare palette and you can even click this push pin to keep it here and these are the red colored objects are not in the current drawing so the green colored objects are the one in the current drawing and this red one is in this drawing in this drawing which was saved at 2 15 a.m. also you can just move between these different revisions so you can just click this and once you're done with that click on this checkbox and we have a drawing here now if you have a long history of drawings here you can narrow down the drawing results using a date range you can just select the date range you can also narrow it down using usernames so in this case I'm the only user who saved this drawing so if you have multiple users saving this drawing you can just narrow down the search using username in filter you can also filter the time quickly using this slider so this slider will just narrow down the time and there we have it all the drawings now the next feature which we'll discuss is other blocks tab so I'll go to home tab and actually I'm going to open a new drawing now and in this case I'll just click on this insert and I'll select recent blocks now previously we used to have this other blocks tab but now it has been replaced with this libraries tab let's just click this one and let's just close it drawing history now in this library now in this libraries tab you can add your own set of folders and create your own very own libraries so in this case I already have these three libraries now let's see how it works now if you want to add an extra library of blocks then you can just click on this icon right here and select any folder which you want to include in your library in this case I'll just go to desktop and uh, maybe I'll select this blocks folder to include in my library and now I've got these five drawings which will be added to the library so I'll just select it I'll click on open and now all the five drawings are now added in our library and we can access these drawings directly from here so we can just uh, drag and uh, drop these blocks now here in our drawing so all we need is just simple drag and drop just like this so I've got two versions of this I'll just delete one of these also you can change the way these look just by clicking this icon so you can just change the way they look kind of like this now the next tool is enhanced quick measure tool so the quick measure tool has also been enhanced a lot and now 
not only you will get the angles as well as distances using the quick measure tool but also you can measure area so I'll just go to this measure tool and here we have the quick measure tool which was added in the previous version of AutoCAD so I'll click on quick and now just hover over an area and as you can see we have the length as well as angles and all these things are clearly visible but now if you click you will see the area here on the tooltip and also the area will be highlighted in this green now that's great because it is really detecting the island and just showing you the area but if you want to ignore the islands and if you want to calculate the entire area then you can press and hold your shift key and now click in multiple areas and it will then include those areas as well you can include area from here as well if you want to so now we have this complete area shown here on the tooltip so that's a great enhancement in the quick measure tool the next tool which we'll discuss here is a trim and extend now for that I'll open one of the drawings here so I'll just go to this a trim extend drawing and here in this drawing I'll start with the trim command so usually when we select trim command AutoCAD used to give us an option of selecting the boundary but not anymore now if you hover your object or any geometry it is going to trim it up to the next available boundary so if I hover my cursor over this arc here it will just trim it up to the next boundary if I hover it over here it's gonna trim it like this this and this so this is quite a new thing but if you are not happy with this if you don't want this kind of feature and you just want the legacy one then you can roll it back to the standard version using this mode so you can just click on this mode and change it back to the standard version so this is the quick version but you can obviously change it back to standard in this case I'll just leave the quick version now so I'll press escape key and also if you just want to specify the cutting edges then you can do that using this option so you can still specify an edge or a boundary for trimming your object so I'll just press escape key again now that's not all about the trim tool here if you select trim tool now you get an option of selecting a fence so instead of a window if you just click and move your cursor you will get this kind of a lasso selection you can see and also it looks like kind of a fence which you can make and once you let go your cursor the objects will be trimmed you can also click and let go your cursor and then make a fence and in this way you can make trims that look like this now in this case if you just want to make a window then you can go to crossing and make a window just like this but I'll just leave it in this way so I'll just press escape and I'll just press control Z to get back to this drawing now similarly we have the extend tool as well which works in a similar way now so I'll just go to extend and in this case also all you need to do is just hover over your object and it will just extend it up to the next available boundary there is one more enhancement which is specific to the trim tool here in the trim tool now you can ignore the hatch boundaries and you can simply trim it with respect to the boundary of the hatched region so I'm gonna just select a trim tool here and now if I just hover my cursor over this object it will trim it up to the next boundaries so in this case it won't recognize these lines as a boundary it will just trim it up to the next boundaries which are these but the same thing is not kind of transferred in the extend tool so if you just use the same feature for the extend tool you won't be able to extend it up to the next boundary it will still extend it up to the next hatch boundary so that's for some reason not translated to the extend tool now another feature is the standard size of revision cloud so for that I'll go to the sample office plan once again and here I'll add the revision cloud now the revision cloud as you know can be added in your drawing from the draw panel so I'll just click on this draw and right here we have the revision cloud now in this case all you need to do is just to start making your revision cloud so I'll just click here and look at this now it will automatically take the appropriate size and you will end up with a proper sized revision cloud 
also the revision cloud is now its own object type so if you select revision cloud now and just go to the properties you will see this we now have revision cloud as an object type it's no longer a polyline and you can now change the arc length here so here the arc length is seven feet maybe if you want to just make it smaller you can just make it three feet and here is the revised revision cloud so that's our updated revision cloud now you can also make revision cloud arc size variable or even constant and for that you can use rev cloud arc variance system variable and here it's off just make it on to vary the size of revision cloud now before we move any further I just want to mention here that if you want to learn AutoCAD in a personalized way using video lectures live online classes Q&A sessions peer group access then head over to SourceCAD and join the SourceCAD subscription where you get access to more than 12 AutoCAD courses more than 500 video lectures and all these extra perks the detail is in the description and also you can click the link here to see the details of the subscription now back to the video now the next feature is break at a point which has been made precise in this version so once again I'll go to this trim extend drawing and here we have this arc right here which is extending from this point to this as you can see here also we have this arc which is completely open and extending from here to here now if you want to break it specifically at a point maybe at a point of contact or maybe somewhere along this arc then now you have a precise control so just go to modify and select the break option which is exactly the same right now though it is a new command but now it works using the older feature and it works in a completely new way so I'll just select break at a point and I'll just select the object after selecting the object we can just trace over arc or any other object if you want to and we can just click anywhere here so as you can see it is extending I have the extension object snap active so it is just tracing this arc and now I can click right here and we'll just break it exactly at that point so it's basically precise now also if you have is maybe straight lines and if you want to do the same for that then you can select break at a point select your line and then track your point and wherever you want to just place that point you can just click or you can also add the distance maybe 30 and enter and now we have this length of the line which is exactly 30 if you want to check it simply type di and check the length which is exactly 30 so now we have precise control over this break option and the break option can be repeated using the enter or the spacebar key so once you select the break command and just break any object and then later on you decide to repeat that command all you need to do is simply press enter key and repeat break at a point command now finally let's talk about the xref compare feature now in this xref compare feature the dwg compare tool has been brought into external references so for that I'll just use one of the external references in this sample office plan maybe so I've got this drawing sample office plan and let's just quickly delete this revision cloud here and I'll just insert another drawing right here for that I'll just go to insert and I'll add it as an external reference so I'll just go to attach and uh, maybe I'll just select the front elevation and open and okay with the default settings I'll just add it here so I've got this one here and this one is obviously an xref now we'll just make some changes to the original xref file and for that I'll just go to this folder the folder from where we imported this external reference and I'll just select this front elevation which is the drawing which we added here and now I'm just going to hide the dimensions from this so for that I'll go to home tab and I'll hide the dimensions I'll just hide the layer or maybe we can just keep the layer on and we can simply delete them so that's going to make kind of a difference here so I'll just select them all and maybe I'll just delete them all so there we have it so we don't have any that kind of dimension here and I'll hit the save button now now that we have this file saved I'll just close it and I'll move back to my original drawing file 
and as expected it will show us this kind of pop-up bubble that our extra file has changed but apart from that we now have this extra checkbox now this checkbox if you keep it checked will show you the new and the older version of external reference so I'll just keep this checkbox selected and I'll click on reload front elevation and now you can see the older version as well as the new version of the external reference so it will just make a comparison between these two and you can see using these colored objects that uh, well the red object is not in the current drawing and the green one is in well green there is no green so we only have the gray object where we don't have any kind of differences we have the gray object and the red object is obviously the one which we don't have in the current drawing so currently we don't have the dimensions in the current drawing and the external reference the original reference used to have this one so it will just highlight the differences so once you're done looking at the changes click this arrow and here we are we have the drawing now so that's the xref compare feature and using this you can compare different versions of your external references and that's a roundup of some of the prominent enhancements in AutoCAD 2021 version that's not all there are many other enhancements as well and for that I recommend you that you look at all the enhancements of AutoCAD 2021 on the Autodesk Knowledge Network and if you want more such videos don't forget to subscribe thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video वीडियो में आगे बढ़ने से पहले मैं आपको बता दूं कि इंडिया के इस फर्स्ट फ्री एजुकेशनल चैनल पर हम डेली आपके लिए लाते हैं गवर्नमेंट जॉब इन्फॉर्मेशन जॉब फेयर इन्फॉर्मेशन प्राइवेट जॉब इन्फॉर्मेशन एग्जाम प्रिपरेशन वीडियोस, एजुकेशनल वीडियोस, पीपीएम कैट सी ए कैम्प सॉफ्टवेयर की वीडियोज वो भी फ्री, फ्री, फ्री। जी हाँ आपने सही सुना फ्री में ही लाते हैं अगर आप इस चैनल पर नए हैं तो सब्सक्राइब बटन को प्रेस करके चैनल को सब्सक्राइब जरूर करें और नोटिफिकेशन बेल को भी प्रेस करके नोटिफिकेशन को भी ऑन कर लें ताकि हमारी हर वीडियो आपके पास सबसे पहले पहुंच सके और इस वीडियो को एक लाइक तो बनता ही है तो जल्दी से लाइक बटन को प्रेस कीजिए और शेयर का बटन प्रेस करके अपने सभी फ्रेंड्स को शेयर जरूर करें ताकि जिनको भी इस वीडियो और चैनल की जरूरत है उनके पास यह इन्फॉर्मेशन इजीली पहुंच सके अगर आपका कोई सवाल या सुझाव हो तो नीचे दिए कमेंट बॉक्स में जरूर लिखें ताकि आपके सवाल और सुझाव हम तक इजीली पहुंच सके तो इस वीडियो को देखने के लिए बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद फिलहाल इस वीडियो में इतना ही जल्द ही मिलते हैं अगली वीडियो में कुछ न्यू अपडेट के साथ तब तक बने रहिए हमारे साथ